Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sid Alpha, and welcome to another episode of Is It Worth It? Today we're taking a look at Shadowrun Hong Kong. This game, released by Harebrain Schemes on the 20th of this month, is a turn-based RPG that's done in the style of... Uh, it's very similar to Baldur's Gate and Pillars of Eternity and I was interested in this game because I was a very huge fan of the style of genre of games and I wanted to see what Hairbrain Screams was able to come up with. So, but before we start getting too far into that, let's take a quick look at the options menu. Okay, so here we are at the options menu, and as you can see, it's uh, fairly basic, but it's got enough to ba get the job done. You have HD textures on or off, high res scale mode on or off, camera mode, free locked or auto. I believe for the easiest experience you can have, uh, free mode would probably be the best bet. Projection mode, never really played around with that, I probably should have. Resolution, we've got all your standard resolutions, no support it appears for 4K resolution. Uh, we do have full screen or windowed mode available, anti-aliasing, no idea what type of anti-aliasing uh, this is again, but it is there. Post-processing, extra blood and gore, you're definitely going to want that turned on, trust me. Uh, for audio settings, we just have master music, ambient, and sound. Now, there is no speech slider in here, which uh, we'll actually get into that a little bit later, but uh, it is conspicuous in its absence, but basically the reason for that is there is no voice acting in this game. It is all text-based. Now, of course, we have game difficulty, text speed, language, which... Apparently, all it's offering us is English for language, so that's kind of a pointless add in there. Input type, we have single click or double click and camera edge pan, which means you can use your mouse to push around and adjust things as you like. So overall, a fairly basic but well enough options menu for this type of game. Now, just so everyone knows, this game does run in 60 FPS and from the tests that I've run, and trust me, I've run uh, uh, frame rate tests on this for over 10 hours yesterday while I was playing through this game. Uh, it, it runs very stably and there are very few frame rate drops except for when it goes to a loading screen, but there's no actually gameplay there, so it's understandable. So with that being done, let's, ta let's talk about the game overall and what the story is about. So first off, a little background for those of you unfamiliar, unfamiliar with Shadowrun. Shadowrun is actually a tabletop RPG game, uh, which is a uh, Dungeons and Dragons style game. In which case, it takes place basically in the 1980s of the future. As much sense of that as it can make to anyone who's never played any role-playing games of that nature, I'll try to make a little sense of it for you. So at some point in time, during uh, basically a divergent time path from our own, magic is reintroduced into the world along with dragons. And from that you have se several people in the world, a lot of people in the world that had latent basically the species that they were actually a part of were magical but were suppressed due to the lack of magic. Once magic was reintroduced, um, people transform some people transformed into elves, others into trolls, orcs, uh, dwarves, you know, things of that nature. And of course a lot of people also stayed human. And also with that a lot of people found that they had magical powers and things of that nature. It's a huge long story arc to be able to cover and converge on. Uh, most of it is not necessary for playing this game so don't feel like in any way that you're going to be lost if you've never played the tabletop version of the game and you don't understand the lore or anything of that nature. Uh, the game does a pretty good job of giving you the information you need without overwhelming you with all the other stuff that uh, would be superfluous to the game itself. It does a very good job of that. Now, as this is an RPG, it is a it does have a story-driven element, and with text-based games like this, where there's no voice acting and no cutscenes to speak of, 
uh, it's really hard for the game developer to be able to deliver the story to you in a meaningful way that will engage you and engross you and keep you in involved in what's going on around you. And I do have to say that <clears throat> excuse me, I do have to say that Hairbrain Schemes has done a magnificent job with the story in this. They really have. They've kept it intriguing, engaging, interesting, and humorous at times as well. They've really done a very good job at being able to tell the story, even though text-based, and be able to make it seem interesting and fascinating and keeping you, keeping you drawn in and looking forward to what's going to happen next. It's like reading a really good book where you get to interact with it, which is uh, one of the hallmarks of a good RPG in these days. So, with that being set aside and put out of the way, yes, it's a very good story arc. Uh, they've done a fantastic job with it, and it's an engaging story. They've done a fantastic job with it, and overall, I was surprised. I was. I wasn't expecting it to be this involved. Uh, because bear in mind, this is only a $20 title. And the amount of content and the amount of value and the time and effort that has been put into this and the amount of time that you will be able to get out of this game, it, there's, there's a pretty good amount for what you're paying for here. So let's get into gameplay a little bit. Okay folks, so what I've done here is I've loaded up one of my previous saves that I had saved right near some opponents because I knew that we were going to need to go through the combat mechanics of the game overall. We're going to take a quick look at the character sheet here. As you can see, my character shards. Her real name is Alicia Carmichael. And she is a basically just your standard uh, mid-range gunner. Uh, she uses rifles and SMGs primarily. She's got a decent amount of quickness, and of course, this uh, this game was actually saved several hours of gameplay back, and so naturally my character stats are quite a bit higher than they are now. We also have in here Isobel, who is your Decker. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with it, Decker is this world's term for a hacker. We also have Gobbit, who is an orc shaman. She's basically the healer of the party. And then we have Duncan, an orc security specialist. He's your, he's your tank, basically. Yeah, he's your tank. So there's our, there are our characters, our players. These characters are your friends. And you will do quite a bit of uh, conversing with them. But let's show you what the combat is like. We'll just pop into that because they haven't noticed us yet. Alright. So as you can see, this style of combat is actually very similar to what you'd see with uh, XCOM or any of those style games. You have cover and ratings of cover that uh, provide you with bonuses to defense. You also have your standard attack and special attacks and then items that you can items or abilities that you can use over here on this side. We've we're actually going to switch over to the SMG here. Do a targeted attack. Well, I did almost nothing. Let's switch back. Go with a more powerful weapon. That did a little bit more. So as you can see, the combat is fairly basic in here. You will have to understand basic cover mechanics and uh, get to know your special abilities. Just because trust me, they will help you a lot. This battle is actually going way better for me than the first time through, but this is basically overall your combat mechanics and what you can learn to expect in the game because uh, very seldomly will you have a mission where you don't end up in some form of combat. However, it will happen, so bear that in mind. There are some, co some missions you go on that there are bonuses for not actually getting into combat whatsoever. And then it automatically takes you out of combat as soon as you finish fighting. 
Now, one thing that uh, is a slightly disappointing is you never actually have any opportunity to loot the bodies. And I think that would have been a good mechanic for them to implement in this game. And uh, I'm kind of sad to say that it doesn't happen here. So as you can see, that is a basic look at the overall combat mechanics of the game. They are functional, they, do the, they get the job done, and that gives you a good example to show that the game is fairly polished, it runs smoothly. As I said, during the entirety of the game that I've played through so far, I have, uh, with the exception of recording this, I have had uh, Fraps running and it has maintained a steady 60 frames per second throughout the entirety of the gameplay with no strange drops or glitches in any way. Uh, however, for the rest of the game, there are a few caveats that you do have to be made aware of. First off is the fact that there's no looting in this, in this game, which is something that I really felt should have been in there and would have been a nice little add-on for your characters to be able to earn some extra cash outside of the flat payments you get for completing your mission. Uh, so it was disappointing that there's no looting system in this game and there has been in so many other games of this style that I'm kind of curious as to why it's actually missing. Now also, another thing you do have to remember is, uh, again, there's a complete and utter lack of voice acting, which, you know, it's a good, it's a night. Sorry about that folks, I am back. I uh, had to take a brief break because there was a train going by and trains and trying to do a decent video and audio recording really don't mix well together. So as I was saying, I was talking about the lack of voice acting and cutscenes in the game. Now it would be nice if uh, those were present, however I feel that I feel that if those were present in the game, then uh, the amount of time and effort and extra money that would have had to, that uh, Hairbrain Schemes would have had to pay out for that would have translated to a much more expensive game for you. And it, not having voice actors doesn't really take too much away from the game, as it still does maintain that nostalgic uh, turn-based RPG style feel very nicely and uh, it does a very good overall job of keeping you engrossed even though it is uh, text-based. Now there are other games like Pillars of Eternity for example where they were text-based as well and that was a deliberate throwback to that older style genre of game and uh, it was a very nice uh, you know good good way to come home again type game but it was one of those games where they included a lot of stories because of Kickstarter and things like that. So there just was so much extra reading that it was just, you just wanted it to end. It did. There was way too much in that game. This, however, Shadowrun Hong Kong, does strike a nice even balance. There is quite a bit of content and a good amount of reading, but it's all... It's all pertinent reading and it's all relevant to the storyline and to the characters involved. And uh, they don't really go overboard on it as Pillars of Eternity did. So overall, what's my impression of Shadowrun Hong Kong and is it worth your money and is it worth my money? In a word, yes. Absolutely. This game is fantastic. I was immediately engrossed and drawn in by the by the interesting story and the interesting characters and the overall look and feel and polish of the game. Even though it is done in a simpler style, it is done very well. And uh, there is a huge amount of content. I've put 12 hours into the game so far and I'm looking forward to putting in many, many more hours into the game already. I first I first fired up the game actually yesterday and yesterday morning and I was expecting to just well, I'll play an hour or two of it to kind of get a feel for the game and it sucked me in hard. I ended up spending most of the day playing it. I wanted to go and do a review on another game. I ended up playing Shadowrun instead. So that should be an example right there to you to how good this game is, how worth it it is, and what a good job that Hairbrain Schemes did with this game. 
So that has been Shadowrun Hong Kong. It is $20 or your regional equivalent on Steam. If you are a fan of turn-based RPG, then this is a must-own. And with that being said, my name is Sid Alpha. I'm going to go play some more Shadowrun. I'll talk to you guys later. Hey folks, Sid Alpha here. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. If you want to check out some other First Impressions videos, feel free to click on the link on the left. If you're interested in staying more up to date with what's happening in the PC gaming community, feel free to click on the link to your right. The subscribe button is down at the bottom. Please show your support and punch that evil thing as hard as you can. And once again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.